Good afternoon, everybody. It's a gorgeous day, isn't it? I'd rather be playing. I have a feeling, though, uh, next week is not going to be as nice from what they say. So. Yeah, it's the tooth's really going to drop. So I guess we're just going to have to take advantage of what we got. So um, I'm glad you all showed up. I know it was a tempting day to stay uh, play outside, but we we are here and we will get uh, chapter seven done. I'm going to pass around the roll here. If South Boss, oh, excuse me, if Keysful, if you all would pass around a piece of paper and. Um, get everybody to sign it for me. Up front in um, Keysville, there are the PowerPoints for Chapter 7, as well as a flyer that I was asked to hand out for a seminar that's being held at Sheldon's that's supposed to be excellent. So uh, if you can pick those up as well, it has to do with managing your personal finances. So um, chapter seven PowerPoints up there up front if you haven't gotten them already and if you will pass around the roll. Okay, we have um, in Keys in South Boston the luxury of having computers in the classroom. However, this is not the time for you to be checking your email on your computer and so on. You need to be focusing in on the, on the class. So um, don't really think there's any need for you to be on the computer right now. You can wait till after class to do that. And um, keysful folks, make sure you don't have those cell phones out. I can see you. I can see you. All right. This chapter is the second of our chapters on planning. Um, this week we've got, uh, we spent some time about decision making uh, on Tuesday and um, there was an intro chapter in planning back last week, but uh, we're gonna look at strategic planning today and strategic plan planning focuses in on long range planning for the organization as a whole. So we're not talking about individual projects or anything like that. We're talking about the long range type stuff. So let's see if I can get the sharing to work today. And um, hopefully, let's see here to give me the option to share the... All right, so there's your um, blackboard. Um, again, don't forget to look at the information that's in the overview for each week. It'll tell you what we're going to be looking at as far as um, objectives of things that you're expected to learn and keep up with your to-do list that is um, kind of a checklist for everything that you need to get done. Um, <clears throat> We're halfway through this section here, so um, we get to the PowerPoints, and uh, hopefully, I don't know that they're going to share, but we're going to see. All right, I have PowerPoint showing here. How about the other locations? Do y'all see the PowerPoint? No. Good. Let's see if that'll work. Well, next we'll have to figure out if the slides go forward. All right, so are you seeing a screen with learning objectives on it? No. No? No. Okay, let me go back then. How about now? Yes. yes. Okay. Oh, I'm so sorry. Sounds so disgusted with me. Let's try to do better. <laughs> All right. Okay. So we're going to look at some definitions first off, and then the um, 
aspects that are involved in the process of strategically planning. We talk about environmental analysis, um, how management gets involved, um, and some ways that we can go about, about formulating some strategies and a little bit about tactical planning and awareness there. So um, again, just to repeat what I said up front, as we look at strategic planning, we are talking about long range planning. So usually three to five years of planning and we're looking at the organization as a whole, not one particular project or anything like that. Um, so we're gonna be trying to do our planning to so that it coordinates with our total organizational goals. Okay, we want to focus in on what has to be done to get those goals accomplished. All right, so a strategy, not strategic planning, but a strategy is a broad general plan for a long-term objective. Lots of different organizational areas will be involved in coming up with strategies. Um, going to give you broad directions, not specific details, on how uh, the organization is going to accomplish their goals. So a strategy is the end result of your strategic plan. Okay, you get together and do some strategic planning and come up with a strategy. Just think again of yourself, maybe your family um, has a goal to take a vacation every summer, okay? That's the strategic planning, but your strategy is how you're gonna carry that out. You need to save a certain amount of money or um, contact your relatives to let them know they're co you're coming every summer or whatever, you know, whatever your specific actions are that's your strategies but of course you have to keep those in line with the purpose of the firm and their firm's organizational objectives so this little chart right here is really um interesting if you think about it because it brings it down into the business world uh, these are some organizational objectives and the related strategies so you can kind of see the difference between um, what an objective is and what a strategy is. Ford Motor Company, of course, is um, involved in automobile manufacturing. They have an organizational objective to regain their market share that they have recently lost uh, to Honda and Toyota. Okay. Um, clearly, we all know that um, U.S. automobile manufacturers have lost some of their business to others, and um, other Toyota are particularly two manufacturers that seem to have gained a lot of market share. So that's their objective, but their strategy is how they're going to carry that out. Um, they've got three strategies listed there to get to that objective. One is to resize and downsize their present models. Apparently. The customer wants a, a different size vehicle than what um, Ford has been putting together. Continue to produce some intermediate standard and luxury cars. So again, that's a strategy they've determined is going to help them get to their goal. And then lastly, they're going to emphasize the use of hybrid engines and fuel efficiency. So, you can see that the strategies are much more specific about how they're going to get to their goals, how they're going to accomplish their organizational objectives. Um, and of course, still, there's more to go after those objectives. So much more uh, specific information on how they're going to do those things. Burger King fast food restaurant, they want to increase productivity. Um, their strategies are to increase the efficiency of their people and their machines. Okay. Um, CP Railroad, part of the transportation industry, they just want to continue with what they're doing. Okay. They want to continue their company to grow and continue to make profits. 
Uh, in order to do that, though, they can't just sit back and let nothing happen. Uh, they're planning on uh, having some strategies, some modernize, develop the real estate holdings, and perhaps have a merger along the way. So if you kind of get the feel there of the difference between uh, an objective or an overall um, mission of the organization versus the uh, strategies to carry those missions out. All right, now, of course, as managers, you're going to want to use a process that makes sure that your organization um, actually uses an appropriate strategy that suits the organization at a particular time. This is not something you're gonna set in stone for one time. You're gonna be revising it all along the way, but there are five steps involved in the strategic management process. Starting off with doing an environmental analysis, establishing the direction for your organization, then coming up with your strategy formulation, implementing it, and controlling it. And of course, in all of those steps, you would be providing feedback if necessary. So on the next few slides, kind of look at each one of these steps in a, a little bit of um, more detail here, starting with the environmental analysis. Uh, before you can go anywhere with your company, you pretty much have to know where you are, okay? And one of those steps is to look at the environment around you to see what is having a significant impact on your firm. Uh, so it, it will help you by doing an environmental analysis of what's going on internally and externally as you are trying to come up with a strategy. The managerial environment is the organization exist in the company right now. Uh, that's the center circle here, the organization. Okay, of course your organizers, your management will be carrying out those uh, four management uh, functions that we talked about, the planning, the organizing, the influencing or leading and the controlling. The general environment uh, will com be composed of several things. What's going on in the economy, socially, politically, legally, what's happening with technology, and what's going on internationally as well. I hope you took out some time um, Tuesday night to watch the State of the Union address because Many of these things were um, pointed out during that address. It was one of the longest ones we've had, but um, I really, as if you are particularly a business major, you need to make yourself aware of uh, what's going on uh, politically, that's your political component, because political uh, component will address a lot of these other components here what's happening in our economy, what's happening with technology internationally and so on. And we've had uh, many of those things mentioned. Uh, the president said the state of the union is strong. <coughs> so that's an economic component. Uh, he did mention some legal things that were happening um, legally going on with the uh, kind of wrapped around politics, especially. I uh, also mentioned some activity with tariffs and so on. So internationally, as well as uh, meetings that have been set up with China and so on. So the State of the Union, um, you really, um, and you can go now if you didn't get to see it and pull it up on the computer and uh, take a look at it. It's really, it will not be a waste of your time. Whether you agree or disagree with our current president, you can still get a lot of information. If nothing else, you can just make fun of the people who are sitting around him um, as he delivers his speeches. So, um, probably be 
tell I'm not a fan of Nancy Pelosi. Anyway, uh, we do have Porter's Five Forces model, which helps us look at the environment of a firm within an industry. Okay, and we want to kind of place ourselves in the situation where we look at our competition. Um, we need to make sure if we are threatened by any new entrants into our business, okay, we need to look at both our suppliers and our buyers because many of them have a lot of bargaining power. Our suppliers, of course, is what, it, what we're able to obtain for our business to turn around and, and sell or to use in manufacturing. Our buyers, that's the consumers, are they? Um, still demanding what we have. Mm -hmm. And then look at uh, the intensity of the rivalry as well. Are there substitutes out there that um, are gonna start taking over our products? And uh, that's one of the things that perhaps Ford didn't understand was the intensity of the rivalry that was coming up from Honda and Toyota. Mm -hmm. All right, so a little bit of information about each one of those there. I think I've uh, kind of covered that, and you can read through it. All right, there's an environment within your firm as well, okay? Um, that certainly has implications for management. It includes all of your departments, like marketing and finance and accounting, but it also includes all four of our managerial functions. Okay, so you have to be aware of both the external and the internal environment. Okay. Um, you might want to pay particular attention to this one because if you've taken a look at your homework assignment for this week, you are aware that you all will be developing your own personal mission statement. Okay, and the reason we kind of bring it down to uh, you individually is because we're trying to develop your foresight and your skills to become managers in the future. But on an organizational level, companies also create their mission, their mission statements, which is simply a uh, purpose and a reason for the company's existence. You can think of that for yourself as well as you're developing your mission statement. Why do you exist? What's your purpose? Okay? Or question sometimes. You have to sit mull over them a little bit. Uh, with a company, they're able to look at the types of products and services that the organization is going to offer and then come up with a broad statement that uh, shows the direction that the firm is going in. So again, think of yourself. Why do you exist? What is your purpose? What do you want to provide the world? Okay, and what direction are you going to take in order to get there? Okay, so come back to that slide if you uh, need to mull over what your own personal mission is. Again, why do we do this? We're trying to develop your skills, but bring it down to your own individual level. But a mission statement um, is a written document. You will see it written down, okay? Uh, management writes it down with input from other managers and employees. Uh, it needs to be communicated to everybody though. Not just written down and tucked away in a file cabinet somewhere. It needs to be spread out among the organization so that everyone knows what it is that the organization is trying to accomplish. Now, by doing that, we see a high uh, increase in the probability of success for the company. It also directs the efforts of individuals. If you stop and think about why am I doing whatever my job is, um, 
how does that tie into the overall goals? Keeps you focused on what your real job is sometimes. Um, and it also gives some rationale for allocating resources in the company. Okay, so your own job description should tie into the overall mission of the organization, but sometimes that tie-in is hard to see uh, without seeing, taking a frequent look at what it is your company is actually trying to obtain. Then your objectives and goals flow from your vision statement. All right, and of course your mission statement should include anything there is out there in the environmental analysis that was originally done. All right, there are tools out there that are used to help you formulate strategies. Um, how are you gonna actually uh, implement that mission statement? Uh, three elements of their critical question analysis, SWOT analysis, and business portfolio analysis. Um, each one of those are on the next few pages here. The critical question analysis, uh, again, this is asking questions of the company that are considered critical, highly important. What are the purposes and objectives of the organization? Where is it presently going? What's the environment like and what can be done to better achieve the objectives in the future? SWOT analysis is so very popular. SWOT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Uh, one of the first things that you'll probably do as you get into analyzing various companies will be to perform a SWOT analysis. Um, the, that means identifying the strengths and weaknesses that exist internally in the company and then externally what opportunities are out there and what threats are out there. You can find SWOT analyses performed by um, Credible individuals. All you've got to do is go to any library database, business database, um, and type in SWOT analysis for whatever company you're looking at, and they will be um, spelled out just like the straight weaknesses, opportunities, and threats for those companies. Good thing to do if you're thinking about taking a job with a company and you're fixing to walk in the door there you should have an idea of what the strengths are of the company, but what its weaknesses too, okay? as well as what kind of opportunities would be for growth and, and any kind of threats out there. The third one, the business portfolio analysis is a graphic look at the relationship among businesses in an organization. We have two of them, a BCG, BCG, growth share matrix, and a GE multi-factor portfolio ma matrix. This one, the BCG growth share matrix, um, I can honestly say that, that I learned it even back when I was in college, although it wasn't referred to as the BCG growth share matrix, but it places the products that your company is producing into one of four categories relative to their growth rate in the market and their relative market share. Some products are growing quickly and yet they have a lower market share. Those are known as stars. So they have the opportunity to um, generate some cash for your company for sure, uh, but um, they have not achieved a large market share yet, or perhaps they've already achieved it and it's starting to fall off. Question marks. Question marks have a high growth rate and a high relative market. Excuse me, I said that backwards. High, low is backwards on Stars have high growth rate and high market share. That's why they call stars. 
question marks are high growth rate, but low market shares. That, called question marks because you're not sure yet whether they're going to actually generate a lot for you. Cash cows. These are the products that have been around for a while. Uh, they have a really high market share for you, but they're not growing anymore. Okay, so there's certainly something that you want to continue producing because it is generating cash for you, but it's probably reached its peak as far as how much it's going to grow in the future. And then products that are dogs have low market growth rate and low market share. You would not want to be putting a whole lot of money into those because you probably won't expect them in the future. I think your textbook said companies that manufacture cash registers is an example there of a dog. Uh, people, businesses don't buy cash registers anymore, do they? They pretty much have computers that perhaps have a cash drawer attached to them, but um, you know, if you are a company that is producing uh, cash registers, you would probably not want to be seeking a lot more money into that because it's not going to do your company much good in the future. <coughs> so that's the BCG growth share matrix. The other one, the GE multi-factor portfolio, uh, looks at the attractiveness from the industry uh, and the strength of the business, kind of puts them in some little circles there. Hard to see the colors on the screen, but, um, and I know on your PowerPoint you can't see them, but they are on the bottom of page 163, if you want to just note that so that you can see exactly what it's talking about, because especially that white blue, you can't see very well there. But the things that fall into the blue area, uh, they're suggesting that you either harvest or diverse those, excuse me, divest those. Those that fall in the S category, selectively invest in those. And then the ones that are I's, these yellow ones up here, have high business strength and high industry attractiveness. Those are definitely the things you want to invest and grow in. Okay, so some different formulations of your strategies. Um, you can choose to differentiate your products, and that means try to make your organization more competitive by coming up with products that are different from your competition. Okay, that's one strategy. Another is to be a cost leader, which means you're being more competitive by producing your goods more cheaply than your competition. A focus strategy means you're gonna target a particular customer and cater to them. Growth strategy is aimed at just increasing your total amount of business. Stability means just maintaining your amount of business and Retrenching means protecting or strengthening uh, a certain amount of your business. And finally, divestiture is when you eliminate a particular unit of your business that's not generating satisfactory profits for you. All right, now how about how do we implement these strategies? That's our, if you're counting through the steps that we're going through on that little chart we started off with, this is um, step four. How do we actually take our strategies and put them into play, okay? <clears throat> you need four basic skills, interacting, allocating, monitoring, and organizing skills. Um, each one of, they don't really give us a slide with information about each one of those. I think they kind of assume that you know what interacting means, means you've got to get along with everyone else and 
um, be able to uh, understand what others feel and so on. Allocating skills, um, that means coming up with how you're gonna get the resources to do what you need to do. Your monitoring skills, that's using your information to see if uh, there's something of concern that needs to be adjusted in the future. And then organizing skills, um, kind of coming up with your, matching up your people and your jobs to get the uh, strategy implemented. So a lot of these, you can see they tie in pretty close to some of the functions of management. So uh, basic uh, managerial skills take a high precedent in implementing your strategies as well. Right. Strategic control, that's the last step in the um, steps of, of strategic planning. That means taking a look back at your process and evaluating it properly. But again, that's going to somebody fall out somewhere. falling out lots of noise okay um, that still focuses in on those um, environment type things calculation of your strategy and so on is it Christiana that's what it is all right tactical planning okay this is the short term planning. Okay, whereas our strategic planning is the long range look that, are, that uh, actually is taking a look at the organization as a whole. Tactical planning is the short range, short range planning that looks at the different parts of an organization. Okay, one year or less. What's the organization going to have to do in one year or less? Develop for production, marketing, personnel, finance, and facilities. All right, so here is a nice little chart that shows you the difference between the long range strategic planning and the tactical planning. Uh, typically, the Strategic planning is done by your upper level management, whereas your lower level management does the tactical planning. Hard to get facts together when you're planning strategically, but relatively easy for tactical planning. Very little details usually in strategic plans, but much more detail for tactical planning. And again, the difference in the time span, the strategic plans are long range and the tactical plans are, are short range. All right, competitive dynamics, something that has been uh, growing a little bit in the last couple of decades. We talked about assessing your competition, uh, looking at what they are trying to do to take over your market share or to create a new market or whatever. Got some terms there. An attacker is the first firm to make a strategic or tactical action. So in your industry, if the firm is uh, the first one to take a certain uh, action, that's called an attacker firm. The second firm has to respond to that, whether they're gonna do the same thing or, or choose not to do it or whatever, that's the defender firm, okay? So let's say, uh, what was it? Who was the first automobile company to uh, introduce hybrid cars? Let me know. 
That's <laughs> what I'm thinking, but I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, I remember the first hybrid that I saw was uh, a Prius. So, you know, I, but anyway, the very first firm that introduced hybrid cars would have been the attacker firm. All the other automobile companies out there had to decide whether, okay, we're going to start manufacturing hybrid cars, or no, we're just going to keep with our traditional manufacturing. They are defendants. Defendants, okay? Same thing with the all electric car now, right? Um, so, I know, and what's oh, the latest of the ones that can drive themselves? Has anybody been in one of those yet? I have a friend who rode one, rode in one. She said it's very creepy. Uh, very creepy. So, anybody over in the other locations, anybody ridden in one that drives itself? I'm, I'm still just getting used to my telephone trying to guess what words that I need to put into a text message. That freaks me out. So, uh, I mean, I'm like, Typing away, and I'm like, how the hell did you know that's what I wanted to say? You know? And now, our, in school, our email does it too, as we're working on it. So um, that's that artificial intelligence stuff coming about. So I'll probably be dead and gone, but y'all might be around for those robots that, that take over and uh, make all the decisions for us. But um, wow. The world is changing. All right, competitor awareness is how mindful your company is of your competition's actions. Um, and competitor motivation is what is it that's giving you, your organization, incentive to do something one way or the other. Competitor capability is the ability to take that action. Okay, so maybe you are an automobile manufacturer and you want to start making those self-drive cars. Okay, because your competition, you are aware that your competition has started to do that. Okay, what's motivating you to do it? Is it because that firm is um, making big bucks off of those self-drive cars? Okay, so that's your incentive to take action but you may not have the capability, okay? Do you have the machinery? Do you have the people that know what to do to actually build those cars? Do you have the resources to uh, take that action? You know? um, how you respond to your competition is going to vary from company to company. Uh, just a little sch schematic of the um, competitive dynamics that we just looked at. So um, I don't think there's anything new really about that. Okay, so um, strategic planning. You are the kind of person that is able to see the big picture. That's what we're talking about. Okay. Not the little details, but the big picture. And that's what higher level management does briefly. All right, let me, um, we have one video on here that kind of puts it all together for us. It's a pretty decent one. So let me get back to that. If I can find where my... It's my PowerPoint. Why do I have so many versions of the PowerPoint? Here we go. This is Hi, this is Amy Arbor, and welcome to our first lesson in the Introduction to Strategic Planning course. Our first lesson is what is strategic planning? Most people know that it's long term planning. What happened? But the proper process is less known, which can lead to problems. Are y'all seeing it in the other? So, what can you still cover in this lesson? Is first, what are the problems that we We don't have it here. <laughs> Let's see what I need to do. Let me stop the share. And go back to my. We have nothing. That's 
Wow. Our projector is on. Let me switch over. Let's try that. Did I come back? No. Let's switch the camera. Still don't have it. Want to set up? Just not getting what I need to get through to it. Stop the recording anyway. <laughs> 